Let's talk about Frederick's ataxia. So Frederick ataxia is the most common form of inherited ataxia. It comprises of almost 50% of all the hereditary ataxia. Occur in a, it occurs in a classic form or in association with a genetically determined vitamin E deficiency syndrome. So there are two forms. One is a classic form and one is a, a genetically determined vitamin E deficiency syndrome. And for both the two forms are clinically indistinguishable. So the age of presentation is usually before 25 years of age. There is staggering gait, frequent falling and intubation. The lower extremities are more severely involved than the upper ones. Dysarthria occasionally is the presenting symptom. Rarely, progressive scoliosis, food deformity, nystagmus or cardiopathy or cardiomyopathy is the initial sign. So coming to the neurological examination, nystagmus, loss of fast saccadic high movements. So saccades uh, is the fast movement. Now what are basically saccades? Imagine you are standing, sitting in a room okay, and suddenly one beautiful girl enters. So suddenly your eyes move towards that girl. So that fast movement is known as saccade. So there is loss of that fast movement. Trunkal titubation dysarthria, dysmetria, and ataxia of trunk and lymph movements, extensor plantar response with normal tone in trunk and extremities. So the, the extensor plantar is extensor with normal tone in the trunk muscles as well, as well as the extremity muscles. There is absence of deep tendon reflexes, very important. So what are the differential diagnosis of absent DTR? This is a very important MCQ. Uh, if you think very commonly or if you have been working in your internship or in the wards or especially in the ICU, you have ICU postings, you will see that first differential diagnosis will be guillain barre syndrome or GBS. The second differential will be what is hypokalemic periodic paralysis. In periodic paralysis, there is oreflexia and there is ascending type of paralysis. Then uh, if, if the lesion is a UM lesion, but in case of spinal shock, like the initial stage, the DTRs are absent, right? And fourth differential diagnosis might be neuropalonetic segment. Uh, so there is absence of deep tendon reflexes and weakness greater distally than the proximal. Distal muscle weakness is more than the proximal muscles. So what are the differential diagnosis of proximal muscle weakness? One is GBS, again hypokalemic periodic paralysis and all kinds of myopathies. So myopathies will usually involve the proximal muscles. Then what will cause predominantly distal muscle weakness which we see in a common scenario is the UMN or the UMN lesions, stroke, any kind of bleed, any kind of tumor, all these can cause will cause more distal muscle weakness than the proximal. Loss of vibratory and proprioceptive sensation occurs. Usually loss of vibratory and proprioceptive sensation is the function of which column? It is a function of the posterior column. The median age, age of death in case of Frederick's attacks is 25 years. Women have a significantly better prognosis than the male gender. So, uh, if, now if you study, one thing I want to tell you guys is that once you study this topic, study all the differential diagnoses are related to the same topic. Now, nystagmus. So, what are the duties of nystagmus? What are the types of nystagmus? Horizontal gaze nystagmus, vertical gaze nystagmus, torsional gaze nystagmus. So, in what all conditions they are present, the mechanism of action you should know. Saccadic movement, I told you, right? Trunkal titubation is most commonly seen in cerebellar lesions. Dysarthria, dysarthmetria, again cerebellar lesions. So all these, each and every line, if you understand, right? if you understand the differential diagnosis and pathophysiology of the symptoms, you will be at a better position than your counterparts or the people who are giving the exam. You will, uh, you will be better among the rat race. So cardiac involvement, sorry, Cardiac involvement occurs in 90% of the patient. Cardiomegaly, symmetric hypertrophy, 
murmurs and conduction defects are reported moderate mental retardation or psychiatric symptoms are present in a small percentage of patients a high incidence of diabetes mellitus is found and is associated with insulin resistance and pancreatic beta cell dysfunction musculoskeletal deformities are common and include ps scabies that is flat foot ps equino virus and scoliosis mri of spinal cord shows atrophy very important point now coming to the pathogenesis the primary sites of pathology are the spinal cord dorsal root ganglion and the peripheral nerves slight atrophy of the cerebellum and cerebral guide can occur sclerosis and degeneration occur predominantly in the spinal cerebellar tracts tracts lateral cortico spinal tract and posterior cortex so if you see the symptoms and if you correlate with the pathology the cerebellar system symptoms like nystagmus titubation dysarthria dysmetria are present the dorsal root ganglion and peripheral nerves the posterior column for loss of position and vibration presence is present lateral cortico spinal tract symptoms are present right so if you correlate you will be able to write understand better degenerate of the glossopharyngeal vagus hypoglossal and deep cerebellar cerebellar nuclei is described the cerebral cortex is histologically normal except for loss of wet cell in the pre central gyra very important mcq the peripheral nerves are extensively involved and loss of large myelinated fibers cardiac pathology consists of mycotic myositic hypertrophy and fibrosis focal vascular fibromuscular dysplasia with subintimal or medial deposition of myocytopathy with usual pleomorphic nuclei and focal degeneration of nerves in cardiac ganglia the classical form of fredrick's ataxia has been mapped to 9q 13q 21.1 and the mutant gene fredaxin again important mcq contains expanded ga triplet repeats in the first intro the two forms of hereditary of ataxia associated with abnormalities in the interaction of vitamin e alpha tocopherol with very low density lipoproteins have been delineated a beta lipoproteinemia the a beta lipoproteinemia that is basin corns weak syndrome and ataxia with vitamin e deficiency so these two names you are you are supposed to remember you are supposed to remember that both the forms are clinically indistinguishable 